So today I want to talk about passwords, right? Passwords are near and dear to all of our hearts. Every single website we go to requires them. So like she said, I'm a principal security consultant. I like all the letters because anybody that'll let me take a test and give me a certificate for it, yes. Especially all the nerd security ones, right? Because they're fun. CISSP, best thing ever. Anybody in the room know how many foot pounds of light it takes to cover a 2,000 square foot parking lot? CISSP sucks, okay? So, so what's the, part of, what's the point of authentication, right? Why do we care? The whole point of authentication is to figure out who you are, right? The who had it right on the nose, right? Who are you, right? We want to know who you are and we have to somehow prove that. So we're going to use multiple ways to do that, right? We are going to use multi-factor authentication, right? MFA, woo, for the win. <laughs> we want to know something you know, right? What do we know? Passwords. Everybody knows passwords. Pins, right? Those are things you know. I don't know any of my passwords, but we'll talk about that later. I do know one. I'll actually give it to you. Uh, something you have. What do you have? You have a phone. That's exactly super helpful. I know. So what do you do if you don't? What else can we use? RSA tokens, right? The little token generators, right? YubiKeys, right? Put the but push the button on your computer and everything's good, right? Something you are. What are you? You're a person with a face, biometrics. Right? Anybody have the new iPhone, the new Android? You can look at your phone and it knows who you are. Anybody gone through American or Delta lately where you don't show them your boarding pass anymore? They use your face, right? Use your eyeball specifically, right? That's something you are. And then somewhere you are. How can I use that as a factor of authentication? Right? Why do I care where you are? It is weird if you're in Chile, especially if you're supposed to be in the office in Denver. If I'm plugged into the LAN, do you know where I am? Right? If I'm in the network on the office and I plug into the switch, you know what port that is. You know what wires that's connected to. You know where I am. So I can say, yep, that's probably you. If you logged in 20 minutes ago from LA and then now you just logged in from Russia, I can probably guess that you're not the only one that knows your password, right? So these multi-factors of authentication are going to give us the opportunity to just know a little bit more. Are you really you? Do you have your phone? So password history, right? Goes back for ages. We've used it forever. IFF, identify friend or foe. Halt, who goes there? Thunder. Lightning. Oh, come on in, buddy. I haven't seen you in forever, right? We've done that. We also used a Cracker Jack toy, right? Originally found in the Cracker Jack, used primarily for dog training now, but it was used in World War II to identify friend and foe. As you're sneaking up in the dark, you come towards a gate, you don't want to get shot. Oh, good, it's you, okay. so. How you doing, right? Doesn't require the whole speech thing, not as easy to breach, requires a physical device. Has a lot of benefits. Favorite password, who has a favorite password? Come on, don't lie. It's the one that you use on all the websites. Come on, right? Here's mine. I love Tigger, right? All the bouncy things. The wonderful thing about Tiggers is that Tiggers are wonderful things. Use this password for years. T I double G R and 99 because that's the year I started using it. <laughs> All right, let's be honest, right? And then I got this email. Anybody got an email from Open Table? Hey, congratulations on your reservation, right? I call, make reservations. I don't even have to do that anymore. I get on the worldwide interwebs, 
and boom, I now have a reservation for six. This was a problem. If anybody knows me, there's one continent I haven't spoken on. It's because I haven't been there yet. Yet I had a reservation for six. That's a problem. So I started looking in and I went to Have I Been Pwned. If you haven't been to Troy Hunt's site and thrown in your email yet, do it. It's not whether you've been pwned, it's how many times, right? This is a good one. So I use acure at thecures.com all the time. And hey, look, oh no, you've been pwned at least 10 times, which means I'm in at least 10 different breach lists. I mean, they're from pretty reputable places, Adobe. Anybody not in the Adobe breach list? I mean, seriously, right? And this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. And this one. There were 10 on the list. There's at least 15 that I know of. This was about a year ago when Troy was still importing a whole bunch of breaches. That's not good, right? My username is out there all the time. Oh, that's okay though. They know my username, but they don't know my password. Well, to have a valid password, a good password, we need to have some standards, right? So what are our standards? Well, we have to have a minimum of six characters, right? A maximum of 12, because we don't want to type too many in there. We have limited database space. We can't store that much, right? <laughs> Databases are expensive. We have to have at least three of the four character types. Four character types are uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and specials. Now, all right, those were too low. Let's say that instead of six, we have to have eight. Well, well, no, no, 10. Well, no, 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 12. And we have to max of 20, right? That'll fix it. We're gonna fix all the password problems we've ever had. We'll just make the passwords longer, more complex, and then they'll be harder for people to break. Yeah, I like it. So, remember my favorite password? Does it contain uppers? Yeah, does it contain lowers? Yeah, yeah. does it contain numbers? Yeah. Is that three of four? Yeah. Is that a good password? Yeah. No, it's terrible, right? So, regrets, I've had a few. This is one of my favorites. This is Bill Burr. In 2003, Bill Burr said, we need some standards for passwords. Guess what they were? Minimum of six, maximum of 12, upper, lower. Two years ago, he said, man, those were terrible standards. We've actually made passwords weaker by implementing those standards. This is the guy who did it at NIST, remember? NIST, the ones that say this is how you have to do it to make it safe, yeah. So I went out just to see if my password had actually been pwned anywhere. I went back to have I been pwned and I went to the password side and I threw in my password. My password says, oh no, your actual password has been in at least four breach lists. <sighs> Anybody heard a thing called credential stuffing? It's the new cool attack that all the cool kids are doing, right? Where you take the usernames and passwords that come from these breach lists that are available as soon as they get stolen, and they take every one and they just stick that username and password into these new sites and see if they stick, right? Because how many passwords do I really need to own your site? Just one. How many are in an average breach? 10,000. What are the odds that one of those 10,000 people is actually going to be in that list. <laughs> Pretty high, right? Free parking, baby. That's what we're talking about, right? Acure at thecures.com, Tigger99, boom, boom, boom. Hey, open table. Thank you. So how do we make it better? Well, we're gonna say that we need a minimum of eight and a maximum of 12 characters. Okay, are there any problems with this? Yeah, anybody heard of a GPU? 
right? A graphical processing unit. This is a processor that does really cool real-time graphics calculations to do those awesome game things, right? When we go beyond a text game and we move into four space flying around shooting at all the cool things, all that calculation has to happen so it can render. Well, that means they're really good at math, which means they're really good at doing computations. You know, somewhere upwards of a billion calculations a second if you get a fully populated machine like this one, right? See how many graphics cards live in that machine? That's a whole lot of the numbers. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't even need one of these if you're just storing them in clear text. Everybody remember our buddies LinkedIn? Do you remember their press release that said, we've been breached. And from now on, we're going to hash our passwords. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> this was like four years ago. We've been hashing passwords for about that many years. So hashing, yeah, oh, from now on. So plain text password storage, that's bad. I don't even have to crack your passwords because you're just going to give them to me, right? But let's say you did hash them, right? The most common hashing algorithm up until about a year ago was MD5. Anything, anybody know anything about MD5? It's been broken for about forever. <laughs> And it's really easy to calculate rainbow tables. Anybody know what a rainbow table is? It's a database of pre-compiled MD5 hashes. That's it. So I just go look up the hash. I take the hash value, I go look it up, and boom, I have your password. Anybody know what the best rainbow table in the world is? The Google. <laughs> Drop an MD5 or SHA-1 password into Google and it'll come up with the value. Because it's in one of the rainbow tables that's been indexed by Google out there somewhere. Yeah, easy, right? So not salted, not hashed, and we can talk about that stuff all day. I can tell you how to make passwords till your ears turn blue. But with the advent of GPUs, we can crack passwords super quick. In fact, there are GPUs that I can rent, as many of them as I want, and they'll give them to me free for a year. And when I exhaust that year, I just move it over to another one, and then another one, and they really want to get me back. And so we can go around and around and around again. So we want to do some things like adaptive algorithms and salts and that kind of stuff to make it a little more secure when we store them. But if I do 8 to 12 passwords, that is an infinitesimally small number of options. And as an attacker, I know that I don't have to bother with one through seven, right? I know I can start with an eight character password and I know I don't have to go beyond 12, which means I can go really wide with my password cracker on lots and lots of machines and have a very finite set of numbers to search. So eight to 12 is out, right? Because it's such a small group of things to do it's really easy to crack. So, what about our three of the four character types, right? As long as I have uppercase, lowercase, specials, and numbers, I can make a safe password. Tigger 99, right? XKCD. It's a requirement at any tech conference to do at least one XKCD slide, right? Yes. Alexander, right? I'm just saying. So. This is one of my favorites. This is how do we make better passwords, right? Here's a great password right here because nobody ever does character sub substitution, <laughs> right? Hacksaws don't know how to replace an O with a zero, an E with a three. Oh wait, that's a standard replication and replacement on every password cracker in the world. So how do I do it? Well, that's 28 bits of entropy, right? If we take this password, which has all four character types, it's 28 bits of entropy or 28 bits of randomness, 28 bits that you need to guess. With a decent machine, you can do that two to the 28th, right? Those two bits, 28 bits of entropy, three days. 
And that's only a thousand guesses a second, which is nothing. A good cracking rig, you can probably do 10,000 or 100,000 that quick. So, pretty easy. And it's hard for the humans to remember, right? What the hell was my password? Or do I want to generate a new password? No, I'll just use Tigger. It's easy. Yeah. Right? So what if we choose four random words? It has way better entropy. That's 44 bits of entropy. That's nearly double. Can I remember that? Sure. I mean, that's a terrible one. In fact, I know people that use that one because it's in the breach list. Go search for it on Have I Been Pwned. Just saying. But uh, So if we talk about password space, right? We take the number of possible characters at times the possibilities for that character. So... If we're just using numericals, right? Eight numerical characters would be 10 to the eighth, right? Zero through nine. Boom, that's how many possibilities are. That's how we calculate entry, entropy. With 12 mixed alphanumeric, because we only do eight to 12. So we use the strongest password. We get 72 to the 12th, right? Or 1.9 times 10 to the 22nd. That's a big number. If we use four random words, that's 40,000 to the fourth. Because most people have a vocabulary of about 40,000, 20,000 active words, 40,000 knowledge recognizable words. That's a big number, right? Cool. I can get a lot more random just by using four words. What if I try to crack that? You know who has a list of really big words? Google. Yeah. So using source interfaces gathered artists and the Google 10,000 combined word list, so the 10,000 most common words found in the Google. Five hours, 35 minutes. Yeah, that's not very long. So uh, upper and lower case doesn't help us. That's out, right? So that doesn't fix the problem. Ah, but changing it every 90 days. Changing passwords every 90 days or 30 days for admins will help us maintain it because we're constantly rotating those passwords. Even if it's breached, it'll only be valid for 90 days, right? Sweet. So. I have my favorite password, and it expires. So what do I do? Oops, it's been 30 days. Have we made passwords stronger? No, we've actually made them weaker. All I have to do is calculate where you're at, and we're good to go. Right? Or we make them so strong that we write them down. So, that one's out. Don't reuse the last eight passwords. Can anybody count higher than eight? Yeah, that one's out too. So, what does NIST say, right? Now that NIST has realized the error and folly in their ways, They've decided that they should do it. Well, the newest NIST standard for passwords still says eight is good enough. But they do say a max of at least 64 if you put a max. So at least 64 characters. Let's put some, some room in there. It doesn't ban changing every 30, 60, 90 days. Even though we know it's a bad idea, they don't ban that. They don't ban the character types. Use whatever you think is important for you, for your users. And it doesn't ban reusing passwords. So you can reuse them. You can rotate between two if that's, that's your fancy. And they do add a few things, though, like they say restrict sequentials and repetitives, right? If you have to do eight characters, they can't all be A's. You can't do A, B, C, one, two, three, right? Those kinds of things are bad. So you told us all the things we can't do. What can we do? Well, NIST says you can't do repeating passwords, right? A, 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 
Not okay. You should restrict the content and the passwords to something that is not domain specific. Don't allow your site name in as part of the password. Very common practice, right? Restrict dictionary and common words, right? Like Tigger, Tiger. Everybody remember Scott and Tiger? You would be surprised how many Oracle databases I find with Scott and Tiger as user passwords. Yeah, insane. And restrict previously breached passwords. Troy Hunt actually has a service where as part of your password change, you can call out and say, has this password been pwned? Boom, try something else. So what do we recommend? What does Aaron say how you should do passwords? Number one, two factor. If you're not doing it, do it. Don't use SMS, why? Have you seen in the news all the phones that have been stolen, or have been cloned, have been taken over, and now they have your SMS, right? Use something like Google Authenticator. Use a YubiKey. Use Duo, right? Duo is push technology to the phone that you can also use a generator, and you can also, it gives you options. There's a whole lot of ways to do two-factor, and remember, it doesn't have to be a one-time password, right? You can also do somewhere you are. Right? Something you are. Use bio if it works for you. Right? No construction requirements. If you want to use all lowercase, I don't care. Do it. My password, probably the strongest one I have, locks up my password manager. It's a paragraph from a book. It has punctuation. It has upper uppercase because that's the natural flow of the text. But it is a paragraph, and if I ever forget it, I just have to remember what book. How the hell did I do that? Oh, yeah. And I only know one password. Well, two, because I have my favorite. <laughs> minimum of 12 characters, no max. I say minimum of 20. Your users are going to freak out. 20 characters? I can't remember 20 characters. Exactly. Use a password manager. Use a passphrase. <laughs> but don't try to remember your passwords. You shouldn't need to know them. Right? Nothing from a breach list or simple password list. Right? I only regret. Now, my, my business partner and I go back and forth on these because he thinks that if you know something about you, if I can social you, figure out about your life, your likes, your interests, I can figure out where you're going. Okay, maybe. But there's a whole lot of literature out there and a whole lot of things that a whole lot of people will read that we can go back and forth. What about password expiration? When does your password expire? Never. Unless I suspect that it's been lost, how do I detect that? With lockouts and alerts. If lockout, 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 password. Oh, I think that's a breach. Right? I know what normal activity looks like. I can use AI to watch my logs and say, that's normal activity. This user logs in from all over the place, but they don't, right? Just like fraud detection on your credit card. Chase used to call me every week. Hey, are you in Boston? Yeah. <laughs> hey, are you? Now they don't call anymore. They're like, hey, so we saw, yeah, I did get one when I was in Japan. They're like, hey, yeah. Uh, we see that you're in Japan and you haven't done international in a while. Is everything cool? I'm like, yeah, we're cool. Thanks for checking in. I appreciated the empathy, right? <laughs> they were there for me. So, no expiration and lockouts and alerts, logs. We got to know when these things are happening and how we can protect our users, protect our data. So, if you're interested, this is all based on a blog post by Troy Hunt, and he has a ton of stuff in that blog post. Not only NIST, but organizations all around the world. Here's the EU standard. Here is the Australian standard. It's weird, Troy Hunt with an Australian standard. <laughs> so, what are you going to do? But, even Microsoft, right? This is actually a Microsoft referenceable PDF. You can read it and say, wow. I'm just kidding. Microsoft has done a much better job in the last 20 years about security first. So, any questions? Have a wonderful rest of your conference.